Hey guys, how are you doing? It's Kev Tech here bringing you another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Saturday. And today I want to go over Lab 12. So we did Lab 11 uh, last week. So Lab 12 is going to be about printers on server 2016. I'm going to show you how to set up a printer um, and just, just like a general video. Nothing crazy today. It's just about editing a printer, setting it up on the server. And I'm going to show you why it's set up that way. And I'm also going to show you like uh, uh, one of the solutions I use in one of my jobs and actually a few of my jobs and why we use that. And, and um, you get a trial for that, by the way, if you don't, have, if you want, you can get a trial for that. But, and I'm going to show you why it's done that way, but I'm not going to go about, I'm not going to go over that application, but I'm just going to show you what it is and why it's used. Okay. Obviously if you're new to my channel, do IT videos, does have support videos about how to get into IT. So as always rate, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell, that way you know when I go live, okay? Greatly appreciate it. So let me share my screen with you and show you what I'm talking about. So today, it's a short video, nothing crazy. Um, we are doing printers. So we're going to open up our server, server 2016. Remember, we have a server and we have two desktops. So we're going to open up server 2016. We're going to go to the start menu. Obviously, you log in. You can go into server manager. Um, we're going to go into manage. We're going to do add roles and features. We're going to hit next. We're gonna hit next, we're gonna hit next. And then we're gonna hit this thing called print and document services, yeah, add features, next. And you wanna like, you wanna like read what it, you wanna like wanna read like what it does. So this one has print and document features. So here it, it tells you like, it's a snap in for managing printers. And then there's this one for scanning. Then there's one for internet printing. Then this one is for LPDS service, used for Linux based computers. Um, we're just going to focus on print server today. So I'm going to hit next. I'm going to hit install. It shouldn't take that long. It should be pretty fast, actually. I'm going to create like a local printer. And I'm going to show you a local printer. And I'm going to show you why it's set up that way. So we're going to hit close. And then we're going to go into uh, tools. Because now it's there. You see it's it's actually there. Um, obviously, you can't really do anything if you click on it. This doesn't, doesn't do anything. Clicking on it as much as as much as you want to click on it, it's not really going to do anything. It's just it's a snapping. So you go into tools, um, and there's this called print management. So this is the one you care about. So click print management, and you see you have print services. You have add and remove ser add and remove server. Uh, it's just one server here, obviously. Uh, Added printer, export printers to a file, import printers to a file. You have your drivers. You have your two printers. So these 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 printers by default come to uh, every computer, whether it's Windows Seven, Eight, or Ten, or a server. Typically, these printers are on the on the computer for a reason. So this one says print to PDF. So obviously, if you remove this, you cannot convert a file to PDF. Um, maybe you can. Maybe I don't know. But typically, that's what it's supposed to do. If that makes sense. All right. So we're gonna create a printer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click here. We're gonna hit add a printer. Um, so it's search by network. So you wouldn't do that. You would you would add your own printer here. So what, what you have to do is for this, it's gonna get very complicated. I, mean, I don't wanna go in depth, but basically what you would do is if you have a printer on the network, you would put a static IP on it, right? And then you would go into, I believe it's DNS. Uh, not DNS, sorry. Let me, yeah, it's definitely not DNS. You will go into DHCP, which, Obviously, I didn't I didn't add it on this, but you would go into DHCP and then you would you would um, this is for zones. You would actually go into DHCP and then you would actually um, set up the set up that printer with a static IP address. But I'm not gonna go over that today. So basically, you go here, you add a printer. Uh, we can do a local port. We're gonna hit next. Uh, we're gonna do a brand new one. So we're gonna hit install new one. Uh, we're gonna do HP. You can call it whatever you want. We're gonna hit next. And then I'm gonna uncheck that. I'm gonna hit next, I'm gonna hit next, and I'm gonna hit finish. So as soon as it's done, it's gonna be right over here. And um, if you want, you could right click on it. And you have all these things you could do with it, it's pretty cool. You do manage sharing. It says this is not supported by sharing. You could do properties and uh, it's not supported by sharing. It's not supported by anything. So then what you do is you go into properties you could do share this printer, render print jobs and client, listen directory if you want. So if you, if you do listen directory, it's gonna show up an active directory. So you hit apply, 
Um, you hit OK. Here are your ports. Here are your settings. It's very important right here. So sometimes, um, remember I, I spoke about share drive directory. Remember like share drives, permission share drives, um, adding a specific user to a share drive. Um, typically here, go to the advanced settings. Admin is right. You would remove everyone from it, right? You would remove everyone from it. And this is print operators. So print operators is, is a is actually a, a group or a person. So if you go into here, you go into Active Directory, right? It's print print operators. It's called print oper printer print operations. So figure out whether or not that person's real or not. So you can do print operations. So it says here. Members can administer printers installed on domain controllers. So you want to find out who's part of that, who's a member of that. So there's no one part of that. I'm pretty sure the domain controller or the domain admin, we know there's not, he's not part of it. I'm pretty sure he's part of it anyway, that he is part of it, see? So you leave that alone. So then what you do is you would, you would add a, a certain security. Like if this, is for, if this was for HR, for example, you know, I made all these different groups. You go into find now, you go in here, um, you go into HR. Remember we created this HR group, right? You hit okay and you add them to it. And then um, you hit okay and you hit okay. And then you hit okay. And then basically it says management, they could print to it. So basically if they were to log in, like HR was to log in for example, this printer should show up automatically for them. So uh, I'm going to go into control panel. So here it's shared. You see it's here already. So then typically what you would do is the printer is not added on directory. You would you would do um, find a printer in directory. And then here, if you want, you would find it in here. It's not in here. Remember, I didn't add it on directory. So if I go here and I'll show you, I'll show you how to do it. So let me, just for the sake of this video, let me turn on my desktop one. Um, actually, I'll turn on desktop two for a second, just to show you what's going on right now. So let me go back over here for now. Um, and then what you do is you right click on this printer, you hit properties, you hit sharing, you hit list on directory, you hit apply. It says this may take a few minutes, which is totally fine. You hit okay. Um, and you go into Active Directory users and computers, right? You right click on this, you hit printers, you hit find now and the printer should show up right over here. So then you could connect to it, you could rename it, you hit properties, it's all here. So then what you do is, see like how I added that local printer, obviously, you know, obviously it's a static IP. If, if realistically you would add a static IP to it and then, you know, you, you, you do it that way. There's no, there's no other way to do it. Obviously you, you would, I mean, there's other ways to do it, but like, uh, well, So there's other ways to do it, but like typically you would add a static IP to it, or you have some sort of print services like printer cloud, or um, I don't know, some other service. I use print cloud. So in my other jobs, I use print cloud. I was a, I was a, I was a, a junior sys admin. I managed it that way. And one job I managed it that way. And the other way, in the other job, I managed it through a server. So like I literally had to go in here. I literally had to go to server manager. I literally had to go into um, print management, and then I would add a brand new printer here, set a static IP, change DHCP on the printer itself, manually assign a static IP to it. And then after that, I had to go into DHCP right over here. I had to reserve the IP. I had to add a class A on it and then just reserve it and then have the user add it that way. So that, that was what I was doing before. So um, here you just saw what I just did. I just added it to the directory. It should just show up automatically and the user can add it. So let's see what happens. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to type control panel. I'm going to do view devices and printers. I added that HP printer. So let's see if it shows up. So it's right there right away. So you could tell like it right away it's there. So then you hit next. So that's how you would add it. So that's how you would create. So you create the, you create the, and you see like it says slash slash server Kevin dot blah, blah, blah. Right. So you see how it's, how it's added, right? You hit properties. 
Uh, sh sharing is not there, but you saw you saw how added it is. It's a slash. It has like a like a directory slash slash server Kevin blah blah blah. You saw how I added it. So, and then the user could add to it. So obviously, if if I were to log in as another account, like it's just for the sake of this video, let me let me sign in. Um, if I were to create like let me log in with help desk just for the sake of this video. If I were to log in with another account with help desk, it might work on help desk because he's part of admin. He's part of admin group. He's a bunch of he's part of a bunch of different groups. So help desk, it might it might let him add the printer. So it may not. So you know it depends. It depends how it depends how I have it set up. So it might even show up there, which is not even showing up there. So let's see if it shows up for him. See, it shows up for him. But if it were somebody else, it wouldn't show up for him, him or her, whoever it is. So then basically you sign out, but now Patty could print to it. So then if obviously if you if you uncheck remove from directory, then that printer disappears. So yeah, that's what you would do. So like literally you would go into the server, right? You go into print. This is like this is just a regular, like like if you have access to do it, obviously you would go like a regular, like a sysadmin or whoever it is. You go in here and then you go into you go into sharing and then you remove it from the directory. So you could change the drivers on it. So then you go in, you know, you go, you go in here, um, you go into properties, you go, you go into new driver, you hit next. Maybe, maybe that driver is messed up for some reason. And then you go in here, you do have desk, you download the driver from the manufacturer website on that server, and then you actually update the driver. And then when you're done updating the driver, you go back into properties, you go back into sharing, and you render the you render it again, you listen directory. And then you might have to have them remove the printer and re-add it again, or have them log off and log back in, remove and re-add the printer, and then they're good to go after that. So that's pretty much it. That's what you would do. So you saw that I added a <laughs> I added a security group to it, and then immediately it just showed up for Patty. So usually it's done by security groups, or it's done by like the user themselves. So like you physically add the user themselves because you know why you know why they do that they, they do that because um stop sharing for a second they, they do that because like what if the person's hr or compliance um we wouldn't want like just some random guy adding the printer on the server and then oh adding the printer on their computer and then they could see the documents that the other person's printing if that makes sense like you know they're going to the print queue and they could see the document and see what it's printing huh it says hr pension plan or it says oh review compliance for this person or review whatever whatever i'm like oh wow hmm interesting they, they have a they have a document printing out about me hmm, i wonder what they're talking about you know like like that that, that kind of thing you know so you, you would restrict the printer specifically to that one user if they're like hr compliance or someone else it depends who it is obviously you would do it like that on the on the user level you would you would remove all the other people and do it on the user level so then that person only has access to it because you don't want everyone printing to it because what if it's hr what if it's compliance what if it's litigation? What if it's a lawyer or an attorney or something like that? And then, and then everyone else could see what they're printing. You know, that's not that's not a good way to have a printing system. And then some of these companies, they some people have a local USB, like you plug and play, you plug the USB in there, and then they're able to print to their computer and the printer, they're able to print from the computer and the printer's like right next to them. And then they're able to just print from their computer and no one else is allowed to print from it. It's just a regular standard local user, user local USB, user like a USB and they're able to print to it and no one else is able to print it. It's not, it's not even on the network. It's not even shared or anything. So just wanted to share that with you guys real quick. Cause it's just something that you should keep in mind. Cause you may do this in your job. You may not. So let me share one more thing with you and then we're, we're done after this. So, so I don't go back into my website or Google and show you like, how is it done on a, on a, on a, on a, on a cloud environment. So this, this is an application called print cloud or print logic. And I'll show you an image of it so you can see what I'm talking about because you you probably clicked maps by accident. Uh, let's do image. There we go. Yeah. So typically, it's just it's a random website. Typically, you the user will log in to a website or a portal, and then they just click on the printer that's listed there, and then they just click add, and it adds the printer for them. And then you could block it. Like you could add certain people to it. Certain people are not added away. They have to be part of a security group. It all depends on how you're set up. So really depends on the company, depends what application they're using, and it depends on a lot of different things. Of course, of course, someone, of course something decides to happen over here with that noise. I don't know if you guys can hear it. I hope not. Uh, Mary can. <laughs> but yeah, so then basically you go into the website 
and um, they go to the website, um, go to printcloud.com, like the domain printcloud.com. So the domain, whatever the domain is, and then printcloud.com. And then they go into the drop down, they click on their printer and they add, and then it's blocked for certain people. And then certain people can access it, some people cannot access it. And it's done like a security level with security groups on AD. Just like, just like, we, just like what we did on Active Directory, it would be the same exact same way. It's a user level on AD. And then that's it. That's all you would do. And then they, 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 they can't really, you can't really do anything unless you're part of that group or you're added to that, if that makes sense. So this is print cloud. This is what I use in my other jobs. Um, and this is what I'm using now, actually, currently. So, and I had to implement this in my other job for, for, for a company that, that we work, that I work for, um, had to implement it because, um, it's a brand new, it's a brand new, um, print system. Like we have brand new printers and I don't want to, I want to. I don't want to add it on the server. I want a solution that's help, that that's gonna help me make things a lot easier. I don't want to be doing it on the server. I'd rather do it on a cloud solution. So this is a cloud solution. So that's why I, I would. That's that's why I'm showing you this because some some maybe in your job maybe they want they want some sort of cloud solution or something in your job to save to, to not save money but like to make your life a lot easier as an IT person. So this is what I did. So there's other applications out there obviously, but this is one of them. Okay. So that's it. That's pretty much it. And um, with that being said, I hope you guys have a great day. As always, rate, comment, subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Greatly appreciate it. And um, that's how it's done in the server side. I mean, everyone, every company is different, obviously. But, you know, you get, you get the gif. You get the point. All right. And with that being said, I hope you guys have a great day. Take care. Peace. Later.